Hey YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here. A long time viewer of mine from the States asked me if I would put together a tornado preparedness video. Well, I thought about it, and if I was going to do one for tornadoes, I may as well do other videos for other types of natural disasters. So this will be the first of a series of my natural disasters preparedness videos. If you live in or near an area prone to tornadoes, you really should have some sort of a plan in place because it's too late to plan once a tornado warning has been put into effect. Now there's a difference between a tornado warning and a tornado watch. A watch is when there are severe thunderstorms that could cause tornadoes. And a tornado warning is when a tornado is imminent and you should take cover immediately. So your tornado plan should consist of two parts. One, where to take cover. And two, how to deal with service interruptions after the storm is passed. So choose a place in your home that will give you the most protection from strong winds and flying glass and debris. Ideally, this would be in your basement, under a stairwell, in a room with no windows, where you can take cover until the storm passes. So lacking a suitable basement location, your next best bet would be somewhere on the main floor that doesn't have any windows, so like an interior room or something, a uh, bathroom, you know, a strong archway in a doorway, as long as it's away from flying glass. And um, yeah, failing that, even take cover under a table. Just cover your head, cover your face with whatever's available and try to ride out the storm. High-rise apartments and office buildings, are their floors and walls are made out of concrete and steel. So they're really quite safe. Um, so if you find yourself there, then you should just get away from a window if you can and get under a desk and uh, again cover your head, cover your face and just wait the few minutes it's going to take for the storm to actually pass through. If you happen to be outside, then get inside. You need some sort of cover over you. Um, tornadoes are incredibly strong. They've been known to lift up cars, like tip them over and stuff. So, you know, if you're 100 pounds or even if you're a 400 pound big boy, you know, a tornado is strong enough to lift you up and throw you around. So it's really, really important to get inside. Now the tornado is going to go through quite quickly. It's going to feel like forever, but um, it's really only a couple of minutes and then it's over. Then you have to start to pick up the pieces. See where you're at see where your loved ones are and try to hold things together. After a tornado passes it's quite likely that some of your services will be interrupted such as telephone service, electricity, gas, so you have to be prepared to live without these for up to 72 hours until they can be uh, restored back into operation. Now you know as well as I do that 72 hours is a very small window and in some disasters it takes the authorities longer to get those services back in place. So at a minimum you should prepare for 72 hours. Now after a tornado the worst possible scenario would be that your house or part of your house had collapsed and you're trapped in the basement. So what you need to do is you need to have some basic supplies in your safe spot that'll last you through until you can either dig yourself out or be rescued by you know search and rescue people. So after the storm if you find that you're trapped uh, because of falling debris or whatever your best way of signaling for help is through blowing a whistle. So you should really always carry a whistle 
on your person. Like I carry a whistle in my belt pouch. You know, it's there in case I ever need it. Blowing a whistle takes a lot less energy than yelling for help. So putting a disaster preparedness kit together doesn't have to be that difficult or expensive. Now authorities suggest that you should allow two liters or two quarts of water per person per day. So a packet of water like this would last a family of four a couple of days. And some water is better than no water at all. So if you want to store two of these, then all the better. And for the kit, you just need to assemble some basic supplies. So in this plastic coat, I've got a bunch of things in here. Um, this is just a Ziploc bag that has some important papers, passports, that sort of thing. You can do the same thing for medications. Um, I've got some lighting. So here's a lantern. Spare batteries for the lantern. I've got this crank radio. It's a solar powered crank radio and it's got a USB port to charge a cell phone but it's a radio. So it's important during a disaster to stay aware of what's going on. So uh, something like this is really indispensable and it also features a flashlight. A family size first aid kit is also a good thing to pack. A few extra flashlights, more spare batteries, emergency blankets, rain ponchos, stuff like that to keep warm. There's another emergency blanket. Um, another flashlight. This is the headlamp. I mentioned whistles earlier. Uh, whistles come in a variety of types. But they make some that are really flat, so they're easy to carry. Some of them are really flat. Here I've got a multi-tool. It's got pliers and a knife. And this pouch also has bits in it. Screwdriver bits. So if you happen to be trapped in your basement with some debris falling against the basement door or something, you're going to need some sort of a tool to get yourself out. So what I've got, aside from work gloves, it's a small wrecking bar, some other things you're going to need are non-perishable, non-cooking foods, so food that doesn't need to be cooked. So here I've got some meats and some fish and some crackers and uh, I also have some candy and some gum just makes you feel better when you're eating something sweet more batteries um, you also need to take care of sanitation so you should have Kleenex packets or toilet paper and some hand sanitizer hand sanitizer. This is a can opener, a manual can opener in case I need it for these cans. And you should have 
like a notepad and a pen so you can leave messages or you, if you have to leave messages for people. Now I thought I had a roll of duct tape in here but I don't. Um, and you can use the duct tape for various things including taping that message up to a wall or something. And then other things you should have are things to pass the time. A couple of books, a deck of cards. Now of course if you have kids they're gonna have their special needs. If you're taking medications regularly you'll have to grab those before you come down into the basement because they have a tendency to expire so you can't really store those. And um, if you have elderly people or pets or, or something in your home, uh, you'll have to take care of their needs as well. But, you know, as you can see, that's not a very big bucket. And that could easily be stored under the stairs in the basement along with a case or two of water. Now, if you're able, you can also store other things such as a gas generator and gasoline to power it um, so that you'll have electricity during those 72 hours when every, all your neighbors don't have electricity. Another thing you can consider getting is an extra propane cylinder for your gas barbecue and that'll help you cook things when you don't have access to your stove. So aside from a gas generator Disaster preparedness doesn't have to be expensive. Then as soon as you're able to, be sure to contact your friends and relatives. Because for sure they would have seen the events unfold on television. Let them know that you're okay. So put your plan together. Assemble an emergency kit. And let every member of your family know the plan. I'll add some links down below that you can click on to go and find more information on disaster preparedness. So good luck, God bless, and help your neighbors if you're able. This is Muskrat Jim, signing out. For more Muskrat Survival videos, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember to click the bell to receive notifications of newly uploaded videos on this channel.